Why does it feel so good and hurt so much? I think you're giving me a heart attack. Guys, have you ever invested in something and then you don't get the results that you are looking for? Or worse still, you lost all your money. You put in something, you wanted to buy a plot and you lost everything. You wanted to invest in shares and instead of the shares prices going up, they went down. Why? Does it hurt so bad? Why does it feel so bad that you actually did lose that investment? That is what I want us to discuss today. Why investment is an emotional process. My name is Geshure Rungu. Welcome. Think about it. In Africa, or we as Africans are known to be very emotional human beings. We put our emotions in everything that we do. You want to date somebody, your emotions are fully involved. You want to make an investment, your emotions are fully there. In fact, in Kenya, we always say, uh, it is always thought that if you don't have a piece of land or you've not built a house, you're not successful enough. Hardly do we ever make strategic uh, investments investment moves in this country it is always based on pressure from family friends fear of being left out and you always find yourself following or many times you find yourself following the masses so what is the next new big thing it is quills we are all in quills what is the next big thing it is what mushrooms we are all investing in mushrooms. What is the next big thing? Now we are selling ants. <laughs> we are all in ant selling. Now, why is this so? It is because when you are doing investments, emotions, whether we like it or not, emotions are part and parcel of the decisions that we make. Anyway, today I want us to discuss uh, because I want us to discuss about emotions and investments because ideally emotions should not be part of your investment um, decisions but you cannot avoid them so when you're considering um, an investment please look into the following reasons see whether this the following reasons are in play in your head if they are then take a back seat or take us take a step back and um, think about it about that particular investment some more number one hard mentality hard mentality h-e-r-d that is following the crowd um, rather than making independent informed decisions usually this stems out of what is usually known as FOMO F-O-M-O -O, fear of missing out uh, I, I have a very good example why was there a traffic jam uh, over, the, over the weekend last weekend isn't it because everyone was going to Naivasha to watch the WRC everyone well, all of us, well, most of us could have sat down in the comfort of our homes in our big TVs and watched that event unfold even in a better way than being there. But because everyone is going to Naivasha, because everyone is headed towards Naivasha, so all of us, the fear of missing out, even when you don't have money, you find yourself going there. It's a common phenomenon that plays in Kenyans. That is why we are easily... Man, uh, manipulated to things like the pyramid schemes <coughs> excuse me, like the pyramid schemes quail business and any other thing that has come and gone number two do you feel overconfidence do you feel overconfident about the, the, uh, the, the that particular investment that you're about to make 
every time you feel overconfident about it is because you feel you have a kind of a superior knowledge or ability when it comes to investment. This usually leads to taking excessive and unnecessary risks and making hasty decisions without proper evaluation and without getting advice. So every time you feel you are overconfident about a certain investment, sit, uh, uh, just take a step back and compose yourself, breathe in, breathe out. And then decide whether you are making the right decision. Number three, there is something called loss aversion. This is the tendency of um, individuals to strongly avoid losses over acquiring gains. What do I mean by this? We are more afraid of losing than gaining. As in the prospect of losing is so difficult to fathom that the process of that, that investment will gain you will gain from that investment. So, we tend to look at investments from a point of loss. If I lost, what will people say? If I lost the investment, what would that mean to me? So, instead of looking at it from the point of point of view of looking at it from the point of view of if I gained, how much will I have acquired? It's called loss aversion. It's actually a a paralysis of analysis sort of you feel like you you will actually be stuck because you don't know what to do with a loss it hurts so bad <laughs> when you're making the investment you feel good when you lose it it hurts so bad okay number four if you ever ever have this kind of a feeling of fear and or greed why I put this together is because they go. Uh, I put these two together is because they go together. There are two. These are very two powerful emotions that can easily influence your investment decision. You know, fear has been known to collapse big banks due to panic withdrawals, sale of shares, and stock in the stock exchange, and all that. Fear. When people are afraid, they make hasty decisions instead of sitting back and evaluating the situation. They actually do not have an iota of rationality in making decisions because of fear. Out of fear, people make very bad decisions. And greed, on the other hand, has caused investors to lose a lot of money because they take excessive risks in pursuit of high returns. So you find yourself taking uh, risks because you heard that this particular investment is giving back X returns without going into details and finding out whether really that is true. This is also very common in Kenya. That's why we lose money by rushing to buy plots and pieces of land in areas which are not even growing in the next 10 years. But because somebody has emotionally sold to us these pieces of land or these pieces of, of like I want to equate it to something like insurance, you take a dive and put your money there. So these are some four things to look out for to know whether you're using your emotions to invest instead of rational thinking, and investment based on what we call information based on information so emotional you know investing is highly discouraged in case you find yourself in such a position take a step back before signing that agreement and do the following number one remember your goal for wanting to invest in the first place because when you're investing, it, investing, it means that you have some money somewhere, and you are looking to um, invest it. But you had a goal, and if you didn't have a goal, sit back, first and foremost, come up with a goal. 
on why you want to invest. Then you know on whether to put your money in that particular project or not. Number two, always set realistic expectations. Always know that the, 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 how do we put it? Always know that every time you see investment, an investment having very good returns, the risks are also very high. Also know that it doesn't have to go the way it is expected. It can go the other way. So always set realistic expectations. Number three, have a plan and strategize on how to invest. Always have a plan. Do not go into investment blindly. Have a five-year plan, have a 10-year plan, have a one-year plan, and you'll be able to make good investment decisions. Number four, do your research some more. Make sure that you go back and read some more and dig in a bit deeper and you'll see there could be something hidden in the fine print. Number five and the last one, do not panic, relax and seek advice. Even when your investment looks like it's going down, before you pull out that money, Seek advice from professionals. Do some more research. Seek, talk to your investment advisor. Talk to your bank, to your banker. Talk to people who have some knowledge on investment. And then you know whether you're making the right decision. As I conclude, I just want to say always remember, successful investment requires a very delicate balance between your emotions and logical thinking. You cannot ignore emotions. Embrace them, but not let them make the decision for you. Stay focused, maintain a diversified portfolio. It always works better, because if you lose one, you'll gain another one. Do not be afraid to invest, by the way. Seek guidance from professionals and always take calculated risks. That has been my time. My name is Gishure Irungu. I hope this has been of help to you as it as much as it speaks to myself. Otherwise, God bless you and cheers. See you in my next video.